Hey everyone, so this video is part of my asset implementation series where I look at assets that are on the Unity store and I show you how to implement certain aspects of them. So I've already done a video concerning the Cartoon FX remaster as far as the explosions and the fireworks. This time I want to take a look at the fire breath and we're going to repurpose it to be a flamethrower since flamethrowers are very common in video games. Also, I try to time these videos when the assets on sale. That way, if you are making decisions to purchase the asset you can hopefully get the best price possible so currently cartoon fx remaster by gene moreno is on sale at the unity star as the time of the recording it's 15 that's one five fifteen dollars usd and it's normally thirty dollars usd i believe i purchased this one about six months ago i believe it was part of a package at the time anyway so let's take a look what we're going to do is once you've downloaded this, you're going to have this folder, JMO Assets. We're going to open it up, and then this is the folder you want, the Cartoon FX Remaster, and then the Prefabs, and then Fire, and it's this one right here. This is the Fire Breath. We'll drag this into the scene. Now, what this is doing, let me move this cube out of the way. This is just a default cube. It's just game object. 3D object and cube. I just wanted to do it ahead of time so that I don't waste your time. So let's start by taking this and rotating this 90 degrees. We'll probably undo the rotation when we're done so it has the correct alignment with the cube. But for the moment, I want to make a couple of changes. So this looks pretty good, but if you want it to be a flamethrower, you want it probably to go much further. The particle system component is very similar. I think there's a few tweaks the script makes to it, but it's it should be recognizable if you look over here in the inspector. So if you want the fire to travel further, one of the common ways to do that would be to increase the life of it. Okay. So start lifetime is 0.75 to 0.6. So in other words, not every particle lasts the same time. That's why there's some variance to it. So let's bump that up to like 0.25. And let's make this 1.10, so that way the difference of 0.15 is maintained. You can see this is curving way up into the air now. So even though we increased the duration, it effectively increased how high it's going. Why? That's because gravity is taking effect. So the longer the particle exists, the more effect gravity will have. So we need to diminish the gravity effect. So that's right here, gravity modifier, you can say it's 0.0, uh, it's, it's uh, 0 0.5, so let's change that to 0 0.2, and that's brought the fire back down. Now if you expand this out, you can see there's a child object that's smoke, we'll just kind of move this over. And now that the fire is going to take longer to hit the end point, you're going to want to have the smoke delay slightly longer. So you'll see how there's a start delay of 0.3? We're going to make it more like 0.45, that kind of thing. And then you can just keep making changes. I think that's sufficient. I just want to show you that you can indeed make these more customizable. Or should I say they are customizable and you can modify them to whatever end you're looking for. So what we're going to do now, that way that we have our fire effect, we're going to attach it to the cube. Now, it's important to know that this, the blue arrow, that is considered forward for the cube, okay? So that's really the side that we want this to be on. So what we can do is we can just rotate our cube 90 degrees. And now we take our fire and we just bring it up to it. That looks about right. And then we just take this and we make it a child to the cube. So now if you move the cube, it moves the fire. If you rotate the cube, it'll rotate the fire. Now, the thing is, you presumably don't want the fire burning right immediately because you want to be able to turn the fire on and off. So what we're gonna do, we actually already created a script uh, before we start recording. I just called it off and it's a simple line it says that uh, in the start section so this happens as soon as the object is instantiated we're going to shut the emissions off so get component 
particle system, enable emission equals false. The reason why there's a green underline is technically this code has been deprecated, so it's still valid, but technically you're supposed to break the particle system down into its individual subcomponents and then control it that way. You can always look into how to do that, but this will work for now. Again, these videos are really meant to be the broad strokes. So, and I'm using the newest version, 21.1, .1, so it's been underlining like that for a couple of years now, so who knows when they're actually going to totally get rid of it. Anyways, so what we do is we want the main fire to be off when, it, when uh, the object is first instantiated because it's going to be in the scene to begin with, okay? We want the small flames to also be off, so we'll drag and drop it there as well. And we want the smoke to be off. We probably want the light to be off, but emission wouldn't shut it off. You'd have to do a separate one, so we can just leave the light like that for now. There you go. So there is no fire to begin with. So now what you want to do is you want be you want to be able to trigger that. So even though this is a child to the cube, it's really not aware of it per se. The cube can't make direct changes to it. So what we can do, we can do one of two things. We can either make variables so as that a change can be made, or we can just use a single variable that says that the flamethrower is on and off. That is probably the best thing to do. So for this on and off script, we'll go back to it. And we'll just do public static. We'll just use a string. And it will be flame on. And it can be yes or no. It starts as no. Okay. Now, this is going to happen every single frame, the update section. So what happens is if this is set to yes then we want the flame to be on so what we'll do is we'll copy this because i'm lazy and also to reinforce the fact that you're just repurposing the same code so if flame on is equal to y whoops need a double equal sign there sorry then we'll do the same thing except this will be changed to true We save that. Now we just need to test this. So what we need to do is we need a key to turn the flame on and off. Could do that with a left mouse button. I don't want to mess up the coding though. So we'll just use the space bar. Again, you can swap out one for the other. I just don't remember the exact coding for the mouse button. This entire video, as you can tell, was kind of spontaneous when I noticed that the asset was on sale. So I kind of wanted to get this out there for you guys. All right, so what we need is another script. This one will be for the cube. Cube con for cube control. Do we want to do? Yeah, uh, we technically we, we technically could have this change be made on the off script, but you're ultimately going to need a script to move your cube around anyways, your character around. So whatever the script is for controlling your character, it would be this. So again, we can get rid of the remark statements. The double forward slash lets you know that it's a remark statement is not executed. And in the update section, we're just simply going to say if get key. Oops, sorry, my apologies. It's if input. See, I knew I was going to mess this up. get key down. The difference between get key and get key down, get key down is true for precisely one frame, and that is the first frame that the key is pressed down. And I believe it's space, all lowercase. So if get key down space, if that is true, then that variable that we just created, and that is off dot flame on is now set to yes. And if I did not forget anything, that should do it. 
So it's off, and if I press space, it's now on, and now just like that, you have a flamethrower on your weapon. Now, a few things, you have to detect collisions. I'm not gonna go into that because there's several ways to do that. You can actually do a particle collision, or what you can do is for the entire object, you can just put a collider box around it and you know, give the player the benefit of the doubt as far as when it strikes. So you can either do a per particle collision, but that's very risky because again, uh, it's a little bit harder control. Whereas with the uh, collider box, you could just do on trigger enter, that kind of thing. Six one way, one half dozen the other. You can do it either way. So you can either check for the particle collisions or you can do a collider box. And uh, just to make sure that uh, this works, what we'll do is we'll just do a quick rotation for this as well. So again, the cube con script, this is whatever script you're using to control your character. So if input, sorry, that was completely wrong. If input dot get key let's just do get key because this can be rapid fire so you don't have to keep hitting the key and this would be a because typically that's what you use for a and then we want to rotate so to rotate let's go ahead and add a rigid body you could be using a character controller, whatever works for you. I'm just, I just trying to do this quick. So if input dot get key equal uh, uh, a, so get component rigid body dot angular velocity. I think do this equals new vector three and we can do this uh let's see i believe on the y axis so zero three zero actually i think we want it to be negative three so it's just one rotation just to make sure that the that um this rotates with the cube but it should because it is a child to it so we run this it's off we hit the space, it's on, I hit A and it rotates and there's your flamethrower. Okay, I think that's it. So this wasn't meant to be a really extensive tutorial. This was meant to be more of a niche. Again, the idea of not a full asset review, just looking at one of the elements of the asset package and saying, here's how you can implement it into your game. Like I said, you would still have to make the decision as to whether or not you want this to have a collider or if you want to check for particle collisions i think i already have a tutorial about checking for particle collisions if not like i said you can just add like a collider box to the whole thing you would just do add physics box collider and then you just bring it in to make it a trigger and then you would just like bring it in to the range of the flame like i said you can give the player the benefit of the doubt you don't want it to be too too generous but you don't want to be stingy either so you could do something like that and then you would just do like on trigger enter and if something hits this then that gets set on fire Okay, so that should do it. I hope you found this useful. And again, just want to let you know that asset is on sale and hopefully this has helped you make a decision one way or the other. And let me know if there's any other implementations you'd like to see and please enjoy the rest of your day.